I try. But any any tips you have, you know, by all means, please share. Oh, good. As much as I learn, I feel like there's always something new, you know? True. There is. We all learning, so. Yeah. Evident from the class I just took. <laughs> that was on negotiating. Oh, the real estate class you just took was on negotiating? Mm-hmm. Brought in um, a professor at CNU. So. CNU? Mm-hmm. How was that? It was good. It was good. Um, learning how to not attack a person versus just trying to work to collaborate and yeah. So, so it can be a win-win. Win. I hope you don't attack people when you're uh... I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it depends. <laughs> Sometimes I go in attack mode for clients. But no, no, I, I, I usually work towards a win-win. Let's how are we gonna work together to get to a solution? So it was mm. just giving pointers on that. All right. So okay. Ready or ready? I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Okay, so <laughs> I'm here with the great Mrs. Kara Mims from Liz and Moore. Liz Moore and Associates. There yes. we go. So today's top topic is real estate. Mm -hmm. So how long have you um, been in real estate? So I got started in real estate in 2003. Um, I received my license to be an active real estate professional in 2006. And I've had my broker's license since 2010, so I've been around for a while. <laughs> oh, so, uh, any other uh, credentials like broker's license? Yep, I got my broker's license in 2010. Um, Congratulations I had, on that! That's a big thing. It I'm, is. It I'm is. Been learning uh, throughout my real estate courses that that's what you need in order yes. to be successful in real estate. Well, and that's the thing; it gives you options. So as soon as I received my broker's license, everyone said, "Oh, are you opening up your new firm?" And I said, "No, <laughs> that's not what I did it for." Um, actually, I, the reason I did it was because I wanted to be a real estate instructor. Um, I used to teach principles of real estate, so people that were right. looking to get into real estate. And um, that was something that was going to help my resume in reference to doing that. So that's why I did it initially. Um, but I explained to people it's good to do it. Um, in Virginia, you have to be licensed for three years. And the biggest thing is that it gives you options. So my philosophy is I never want there to be an opportunity that I'm not qualified or I'm not able to take advantage of because I don't have something. Um, so yeah, so I have my broker's license and then I have my ABR designation. So ABR is accredited buyer's representative. Okay. So able to help me um, as far as providing resources to my buyer clients. And then also I have my ePro, so that's my um, internet professional designation. Okay, that explains um, a lot. <laughs> yes, as far as social media. <laughs> um, and, and just how to communicate with people on the internet and that kind of thing. And then I'm actually in the process of um, obtaining my GRI, which is stands for a Graduate Realtor Institute. Um, I've completed my courses, I just have to submit my application for that. Um, and I always say that's kind of the equivalent of going to graduate school, nice. you know, getting um, your graduate degree. So yeah, education is very important to me. So anything that I can do with that, I'm, I'm happy to do. Goodness, so you had a, a, a long career in real estate mm -hmm. compared to a lot of people. I've done a lot of research and it seems like a lot of real estate agents, if you go on YouTube, it's like um, three years and then they're done. Mm -hmm. So what what was it that separated you to have this longevity so far? I know I'm it's crazy. Been that long. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and you're right. And I think that that's honestly with a lot of business owners. Um, they say it takes three to five years for you to kind of get over that hump and to have long term success. Um, I was very fortunate. So when I very first got in the business, um, I was single and I was at home. <laughs> so so that was helpful because I didn't have a lot of real bills um, and I was able to kind of cultivate. Um, the the foundation of my career, which was built on education. Um, I've mostly spent um, my time, my energy, and my money on doing my business by referral. So I meet a client in whatever way that may be. Um, a lot of times it's by someone referring them to me. I just try to do the best that I can for them and continue to provide services for them, you know, in the future. Um, and so that was a huge part of it. Um, I actually, you know, got engaged and married and, you know, had kids in the first part of my career. Um, and I think a, a, a huge part of it is what I, I guess, promote or am always so thankful for, which is my village. Mm -hmm. um, I've been fortunate to have some really amazing mentors in this business. Um, I work at Liz Moore, so there is an actual Liz Moore, um, and then Donna Moyer, who is my um, direct broker. broker. Um, but I've been fortunate with um, a lot of mentors in the industry um, mm -hmm. as well. And I think to the fact that I'm always learning. So I, I never think I know it all. Okay, right. <laughs> um, and I think because of that, the clients that I come in contact with, that's usually what 
attracts them to me. The fact that I'm knowledgeable, the fact that I'm approachable. Um, my philosophy is this is a team, you know, a team um, adventure of sorts. So, you know, I bring the experience and the expertise, but at the end of the day, the client is the one that's signing on the dotted line. So I really try to be in tune with what their needs are and how I can help. Um, I know I'm in sales, um, but I don't like to say I'm a salesperson. I truly love to help people. And so that's, that's the energy that I come in with. How can I help you reach your goal, whether it's buying or selling? Uh, that's powerful. <laughs> I think a couple of things you said that uh, really stood out was, first of all, that it's a business. So technically real estate agents are self-employed or? We are independent contractors. No, now so like there are different models, but most of us are independent contractors. Okay, so the whole mindset of going into it, it has to be different, right? It's not like you're clocking into a ball. Absolutely. <laughs> well, and, and when you ask, when, when you pose the question as far as, you know, the long term, that's, I think that that's where we lose a lot of people because okay. like right now, the market is good. You know, houses are, you know, there are multiple offers and houses are selling for top dollar. And so I think for some people that are into sales, that's very attractive because they're like, oh, I can go and get a quick dollar. For me, I've always looked at it as a career. So I've looked at um, reinforcing that foundation. It's not just about the money and, and cents for me. No, don't right. tell my husband that. But, <laughs> but you know, when, I think when you look at it more so than, well, what sale can I get? I don't, I don't do my um, business planning based on the money and cents part of it. I do it based on how many families am I going to help oh. this year. And I think that change in thought process is helpful to that longevity. Yeah. Uh, I think another good point that you had made was um, uh, your knowledge of things. I remember when I first reached out to you, it was on social media, mm -hmm. and I asked you, um, can you, or are you familiar with... Um, using veterans using the VA loan twice or people using VA mm -hmm. loans twice. And you're like, sure, I can help you. And I was like, I'm going to her, <laughs> like no doubt. But, uh, yeah. Well, and a huge part of that is also my team um, because I, I, they make me look very successful. But like when you were asking as far as the VA loan, I feel as confident as I do, a huge part of that is because of Jenny Phillips. She's my preferred lender. Um, and because of her knowledge and because of the service and, and, and whatnot that she provides clients, that's helpful to me to be able to confidently say, oh, yeah, absolutely, we can take care of you from you know, start to finish. So. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Phillips, right? Yeah. She's amazing, too. Yep. I see her on social media all the time. <laughs> and she's always, you guys are like two peas in a pie. I was looking <laughs> on. Okay. Uh, so I did want to ask you, uh, yeah. for sale by owners, um, okay. why don't they work like 90 to like 93% of the time I read? <laughs> I'm glad you said those statistics. Um, so I don't, so some agents are like, oh my gosh, I can't stand for sale by owners. The thing about for sale by owners, I respect them. You know, I, I am a, um, I love a good bargain. So I can appreciate from their standpoint, they're looking at, especially if they've ever owned a home or sold a home or purchased a home, you know, it's, especially if you don't have a lot of major issues to the transaction, it's very easy to get confident in the fact that, well, I can do that too. A lot of people think, oh, well, um, on the buy side, they feel like, oh, well, there's Zillow and there's Trulia. I can find my own house. And you know what? You absolutely can. For one thing, is it actually available? Right, right. <laughs> That's the first thing. Um, but the other thing I, I, I um, explain to clients is that's one part of the process. There's so much that happens once you find the one that in one aspect can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a, a huge part of where I have job security. <laughs> I don't like that. But there's so many different components that can go sideways in a deal. Um, so the fact that I can either prevent those issues from happening or when they do, I'm knowledgeable to know how to handle them properly and get us successfully to the closing table, that's what people employ me. It's not just for me to show them a property or it's not just to st stick a sign in a yard or put it on you know, social media, it's all the different things that can go wrong getting from point A to point Z. Um, so going back to your point as far as for sale by owners, I think a huge part of why they typically are not successful is because they're only looking at that one component. So let's say you, you, know, you find your own buyer, someone goes by the for sale by owner sign, they're interested in the house, the price makes sense, you get a deal. Our contract is now 13 plus pages, not counting addendums. And that grows every year because there are lawsuits. And I always tell people, you know, especially if it's a repeat client, and I'll say, well, the last time we met, it was maybe 10 pages. 
The reason that it's longer is because someone sent somebody, and we now need to get it in writing. Why? <laughs> um, so, so that's so, statewide? I'm sorry, that's statewide? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, there are different contracts out there, but I mean, in general, you know, they're extensive because there was probably someone that either got sued or there was a, you know, so misunderstanding. So it becomes a law. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, and so that is... That, I think, is probably the biggest thing. Um, I actually just recently listed a property over in Riverside, and um, she was referred to me, um, actually from a, a, a real estate professional who's gotten out of the business and said, you know, I want to refer business to you, so thank nice. you. Um, but in speaking to the seller, you know, I, I, I said, well, you know, like to get to know you and the property, and she had tried doing for sale by owner for one week, and she said, it's too hard. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. You, you know, and get she a lot had of really, investors who come by or call you. Yep. Well, my other property, I know you helped me with that. And right. of course, I had it for sale by owner, yep. thinking that I could do it myself. And all and these it's investors, hard, isn't it? yeah, all these investors <laughs> would call or come by. Right. And I was like, no, no, no. But as soon as I um, hired you, um, the house had got real offers and right. it really sold. You know what I mean? And uh, it's just, it's, it's a trip because uh, you would think that, I guess, back in the olden days, it probably mm -hmm. worked a lot better. Yeah, but yeah. now. Well, and I think too. Anytime I sit with a whether it's a buyer or a seller, I always want to figure out a strategy. You know, I want to first and foremost figure out, okay, what is your end goal? What are you looking to do? You know, obviously on the seller side, they're looking to sell. Maybe they're looking to downsize. Maybe they're looking. You know, the family has grown. Maybe they're relocating out of the area. Whatever the case is, what is your goal? You know, and I want to figure out the best strategy to get you to that point. On the buy side, maybe it's a first time home buyer, you know, they want to own a home versus renting and, you know, wasting money in that regard. Or maybe it's a family, you know, they have a family home and it's just too big. Whatever that goal is, I always develop a strategy on how to do that. And that's where the experience and the expertise come into play that a for sale by owner just does not have. When a buyer or seller, you know, it, it, it is the most important transaction to them and that's great and they're there's a value that they know, you know, differently than a, a realtor professional. But we do this every day, and every transaction that I go through, the, the ups and the downs, it makes me that much more of a better realtor for the next client. And they don't have that because they're not dealing with multiple tra transactions on a given day. So um, I, I applaud their efforts. <laughs> <laughs> right, there, right. there are a few um, that, that can do it successfully, um, but like like you mentioned before, um, historically most for sale by owners at some point end up hiring a professional, and I'm always happy when I'm able to be that person because I know that they've tried it. They they've literally tried to do it, and so they have a greater appreciation for what I do. <laughs> Thank God for the for uh, Miss Kara because yes. she helped happy me to twice. Help. <laughs> um, the next question I would like to yeah. ask is, um, what's the uh, best way for people to buy property who think they can't afford it. So like any programs or like yeah. looking for for sale by owners or owner financing, mm -hmm. like what would you what would be your advice? Um, I always say owner financing is a case by case scenario. I think um, when people think about owner financing, what I will say is sometimes it's too good to be true. <laughs> so so if you go into owner financing, you just have to go into that intelligently and, and that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but in general, as far as people that maybe don't think that they can purchase, there are a lot of grant programs that are available. Um, you, of course, know um, for military, there's the VA, and a lot of people don't understand that there's no money down when it comes to that. Um, so that's a, a great benefit to our military and honestly the least that we can do for, for the sacrifice. Um, but if someone is not military and so they're not eligible for VA, there are um, different localities have programs. Um, I actually work with the city of Hampton through their redevelopment housing authority. Um, and they specifically have first time home buyer programs where they um, give a certain amount of closing costs and down payment assistance to help a buyer. Now you still have to get your own financing. Um, and so, you know, that's a whole conversation that you need to have with a mortgage professional. Um, to that note, one thing I will say is a lot of times people don't, they kind of prejudge themselves and they say, well, I can't buy a house because my credit score is this and I know I have this and I know I have that. That's fine. Everywhere, everyone starts somewhere. So what I encourage them is I say, you know, it's either a yes today or it's a delayed yes. Mm. We can't do it right now, but, and that's why my team is so important because they can work with you to get you in a position where you can be in yes. 
I'm not going anywhere. Like I mentioned before, I'm not in it for, okay, I need my April sale, I need my May sale. How can I help you whenever that may be? So we may you know, get to work together in 2019. Right. We might get to work together in 2025. Right. You know, that's fine. Um, but there are a lot of resources. There are a lot of grant programs. There's assistance money out there. And it's really just a matter of educating yourself. So what I typically tell a client is, let me put you in touch with a mortgage professional. Let's see where you are. Um, then from there, I can then, you know, figure out what programs out there will best suit you. Um, but I think the biggest thing is to know that there's hope and that there is um, there is assistance out there that can help and home ownership can be achievable. I actually had some military clients, um, my, actually my first closing this year, now that I think about it, um, they just randomly went into a local credit union. Well, let's, you know, let's see about, I think they were getting financing for a car. And, th and then after they went through that, she said, you know, have you ever thought about buying a house? Um, and long story short, I ended up showing them um, one of my properties. We had that one under contract, so that one wasn't available. But I let them know that you know I'm a licensed you know real estate broker in, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I would be more than happy to help them find a house. And it was it was moving because they didn't at the beginning or at the end of last year they did not think that home ownership was a reality for them. And then come end of January, they were moving into their very first home, nice. totally remodeled, beautiful brick home in Hampton. Um, and it's, it's just one of those things, you never know until you try. So right. I, I encourage people to try. I always say, let someone else tell you no. Nice, nice. So the, just that attitude of never give up or absolutely. at least try and get the knowledge. That's absolutely. a lot of people don't because they're afraid. You're absolutely correct. Absolutely. Yeah, you said that um, that was in Hampton, mm -hmm. so we're local here in what's known as the Seven Cities in yep. Hampton, Virginia. Oh, well. Seven five seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you or any other real estate agent who's um, licensed for Virginia can sell or buy or help clients in Richmond or um, anywhere else throughout the whole state, which is not. So I am licensed in the Commonwealth, Virginia. Um, that being said, I do try to stick to what I know. Okay. <laughs> so for me, I, I would say, you know, pretty much like you said, the Seven Cities, um, I will go I won't quite go to Richmond. I have some great realtor partners in Richmond. Um, but I would say I do anywhere from Williamsburg down to like Virginia Beach. Um, okay. That's where I'm most knowledgeable and that's where I feel like I can give the best service to my clients. If at any time it's an area that I don't feel like I can, you know, give a thousand percent, I have lots of connections throughout the um, Commonwealth and what I would do is I would refer them to someone that I know will treat them with the same level of care that I would. Nice, nice. So either way I got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Um, another thing is more of a social issue, I guess, or a previous social issue with um, the wealth the wealth gap in, um, in real estate mm -hmm. and um, the historical redlining that took place mm -hmm. is uh, do you or have you come across or find any of those kind of practices happening? So thankfully I have not personally um, but to that point um, last year was 50th anniversary of Fair Housing um, and we actually our um, association put on a, a phenomenal program um, with some realtors that were, you know, practicing then. Um, and it's so amazing to see how far we have come. Um, but to your point, we still have so far to go. Wow. And that's where I feel like it's, like you said, you know, the attitude of never give up. I think sometimes people, um, they're stuck in their situations and their, their circumstances. And maybe, you know, generations past, there were, there were, Let's just say there were people that stopped them, right, <laughs> you know, right, from, right. from moving forward. Um, but many times when that's generational, you don't know where to go or, or, and I'm sure that there are situations where that still happens. It's illegal, but, you know, I'm not naive to think that it doesn't happen, even though I haven't personally um, dealt with that. What I would encourage people to do, though, is to realize and educate themselves on what the laws are and what opportunities are available to them and what is not acceptable and to call that out. Um, like I said, I haven't personally ran into that, but one of the things that I find is that there are things that we know are wrong and people overlook it and, you know, just kind of go on, you know, along with their business. And if we do not call out what is wrong, right. then it's never going to change and it's going to continue. Um, so, you know, I'm a big proponent of progress. And like I said, I, I feel like we've come a very long way. I feel fortunate as a young African-American woman to be able to do all that I do and all the opportunities that I'm afforded, but I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that there are so many that paved the way for me. And so because of that, it is my job to make sure that I'm doing the same for the generations coming after me. 
Mm, that's yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, so we're gonna close up in a little bit. A couple more questions. Okay. Um, what's the uh, best advice you would have for a real estate, uh, up and coming real estate agent, or somebody thinking about coming into the business? Best advice that I would give them is kind of what we spoke on before, which is to never give up. You have to be really tough um, to survive, much less to thrive in this right. business. Um, it's, it's very hard, um, but it's one of my greatest passions. The, the feeling that you get to work with someone from point A to point B, I, I don't take it for granted that I'm, I'm given this opportunity every day, um, but it's a lot of hard work. It, it really is, and so I would just encourage them um, to, to, to keep going, you know, to, to not give up and to learn the most that they can learn because I, I find there are a lot of people that, well, I've been in for 30 years and I know it, it, we can always, always learn. We can always learn something. So I guess it would be two, um, to never give up, you know, keep pushing and to always keep learning. Wow. Well, I appreciate it. I thank you for your time. Absolutely. And, um, I always have time for one of my favorite clients. Uh, so I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, and I, I do hopefully look forward to working with you again in the future. Um, I have some things in mind that I okay. want to do for the property. I'm ready. But, um, <laughs> I got to make sure I'm together and I come to you correct. But um, is there anything that you, any topic or anything that you had that you might want to um, let the people know or any at or any shots out you wanted to do to family or whatever. whatever. <laughs> this, is friends. Friends. this is your time. Family and friends. I want to say kudos to, to my hubby. Um, he's my biggest supporter. Um, I feel very blessed. I have an amazing village of people. Um, and, I, and I always say that because I'm a big proponent of giving people their roses when they're alive. You know, once they're dead and gone, you know, we, we come together and say, oh, they were so nice and they were so this and they were so that. No, tell them when they're alive. So um, definitely big kudos to the hubby. Um, I, I feel very fortunate to do what I do, um, and I, I take a lot of pride in being a realtor. Um, you know, whether it's from helping somebody buy or sell a home to, you know, I'm very involved with our public policy and advocacy, you know, efforts, um, because I want, to, I want to make my community a better place because of me being here. Um, so anything that I can do to make that happen, I'm all for it. Um, so I thank you for the opportunity to, to be showcased on <laughs> on your your social media um, and whatnot. And I, I love your entrepreneurial spirit, um, love your wife and Aww. your little girl, um, and I'm just happy to be a part. Of it. Thank you so much also for uh, the onesie that you got for her, especially <laughs> yes. Princess Savannah. That was lovely. <laughs> she is it, a yeah. princess. So uh, definitely. So thank you. And until next time, Ms. Kara. Absolutely. Live, love, sell, VA. After our interview with Miss Kara about real estate, I wanted to give her the shirt for okay. my clothing line, Better Life, Absolute Quality. Yes. And so, here Thank you go. I know you. you've been working out. Yes. Thank you for your half marathon. Half marathon. So, this is a small. It's a small. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thankful to rock it in a small. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I love All it. Right. I love what you're doing. Appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> All right. This is awesome. Thank you.